GT Countdown. Ten games we want on Oculus Rift. We are all so glad you came. <laughs> Yippee! We've all sampled the Oculus Rift, and while it scorched our retinas and rolled our stomachs a bit, we got to thinking about experiences we'd rather have other than Twitch multiplayer shooters and empty house navigators. Some of these suggestions are games we'd like to see resurrected with this new peripheral, and others are completely new concepts that were previously impossible. The playable future of virtual reality may be a ways off, but for the time being, we're going to dream big. And keep a bottle of Dramamine at the ready. Achilles, look out! Amnesia. First-person exploration and puzzle solving is all well and fun. That is until you add a disturbing slack-jawed demon monster thing who toys with your sanity. Amnesia The Dark Descent paved the way for a genre that focused little to no attention on combat and more on running away from nightmarish creatures. It's hard to argue against the fact that simple quirks like having to use your neck muscles to physically turn your head and look behind you is a thousand times more immersive than any mouse or analog stick could hope to emulate. With series sequel A Machine for Pigs and other encouraging titles such as Outlast and Routine on the horizon, we can only imagine what pulse-pounding possibilities could be utilized with the Oculus Rift. Bethesda. With the Fallout and Elder Scrolls games, Bethesda has set the bar this generation for open-world FPS adventures. Quick reflexes in these environments can help keep you alive, but the true immersion comes from just taking in the massive world, stopping by the random cave or dungeon just because you feel like it. While an 80-inch television can sure bring the wasteland of New Vegas or shivering peaks of Skyrim to life, completely shutting the outside world away and limiting our vision to only include atomic casinos and ice-breathing dragons sounds pretty incredible. Chivalry. Medieval Warfare. Shouldering the rifle to take up the sword and shield gave Chivalry Medieval Warfare the individuality it needed to stake its claim in the PC multiplayer arena. Simplistic maneuvers rewarding strategy and dexterity over reflexes built its competitive reputation. First-person shooters are the genre most easily adopted by the Oculus Rift, but Chivalry Medieval Warfare would be a unique opportunity to break away from the run-and-gun template. The Rift technology's panoramic view would broaden your awareness of the battle around you and foil those who intended to stick a blade up your backside. Racing Games If there's one thing driving fans want, it's an authentic, true-to-life experience. We want our cockpit view, and many invest in pricey wheels, three-screen setups, and even motorized seats. Furthering that experience with the Oculus Rift is a no-brainer, as the biggest trouble with conventional cockpit views is the lack of peripheral vision, which can cause you to bump into cars pulling up on your side. Multi-screen setups help, but the frames of each monitor tend to get in the way. Add an Oculus Rift to the setup, and the only thing we'll be missing is the smell of burning rubber on the track. End War The Oculus Rift is meant to put players into a first-person view, and no one's ever heard of a first-person RTS. But imagine if you were placed into the perspective of a general inside the confines of a bustling command center with a massive holographic projection table in front of you, displaying the battle at hand, similar to what we saw in the CG trailer for Tom Clancy's End War. We think the gameplay could translate well with this setup, but what has us even more intrigued are the possibilities to really sell the surrounding environment to the player, since you could look up at any time to observe what other characters are doing. What if a soldier turns around to warn you of an incoming platoon just seconds before your own display picks it up? What if a high-ranking officer comes in to issue you commands that you may not agree with? Situations like this could really open the door to a new type of storytelling for the RTS genre, adding a believable dynamic to your surroundings that could only be possible with a VR headset. Endless Ocean what better way to get immersed in a virtual world than to dip beneath the waves? Endless Ocean is about the purity of exploration, identifying rare fish, and swimming with sharks and whales. With its slower pace and emphasis on discovery, a similar diving simulation would be a perfect fit for the Oculus technology as you take in the magnificence of the undersea world up close and search shipwrecks for lost treasures. Plus, you can pet a shark without being afraid that it would bite your hand off. Licensed Environments when the iPad was released for the PS3's iToy, followed by Connectimals for the Xbox 360, it opened up a brand new genre of interactive teddy bears. We were sure we'd get one of these experiences for every single animated feature film, but no one has made headway in this space since. Imagine if your favorite television shows, movies, and games all came with a virtual environment that you could explore. What if your little ones could play with the minions from Despicable Me for a bargain downloadable price? 
What if you could explore the deck of the Helicarrier and hang out with the Avengers, or mosey through the darkness of the Batcave from The Dark Knight Rises? If companies are building these environments anyway, and sometimes providing 360-degree on-set tours on their websites, why not take it to the next logical, profitable step? The Metro Series Known for its derelict, somber atmosphere and creepy environments, the Metro experience could be easily amplified with the Oculus Rift. In Metro, wearing a mask is a huge part of the game. It's capable of fogging up, icing over, and potentially getting bloody. And with the notion of the Oculus headset in the mix, the mask as a game mechanic can do much more to immerse the gamer. For example, what if you had to check the status of your pneumatic weapons by physically looking down at them? That would make the combat much more tactical and distressing. Also, what if NPCs were conscious to where you were looking while engaged with them in conversation? If your gaze wandered, perhaps they would think you lost interest in what they had to say. In addition, think about how much more precise aiming could be when it comes to dealing with acrobatic enemies that fly, jump, and scuttle in and out of the darkness. Simply put, Metro owns the mask as a part of the game's atmosphere, so why not take it to the next level with the Oculus and challenge the way we play first-person shooters? Minecraft this one is so obvious and explanatory that we could almost skip to the next entry, but let's explore the possibilities for a bit. Every other game we could think of would come prepackaged, but this would be a world you could fashion to your liking. Have you ever wanted a virtual Westeros or Middle Earth to explore in first person? Hundreds of players out there with fevered imaginations and an obsession with the smallest details have got you covered. Whenever these two entities connect, you'll no longer be able to just look at your creations, you'll live in them. Mist. It's great that Team Fortress 2 and, someday, Doom 3 support the Oculus, but the nerve needed to ascend in multiplayer or overcome demons seems counterproductive to the wonders of immersion. While first person and shooting go together like Orstein and Smau, there are more wily experiences to be had by the simple power of observation. Classic puzzle fests like Myst, or more precisely, Real Myst, provide atmosphere and worlds you want to get lost in, so let us. The Witness seems to lay in the same vein, but the world is so evocative, we want to just polygon watch and lap in the visual treats. Likewise, other smaller indie efforts like the upcoming Gone Home ask us to surrender the expectations of even puzzles and become intimate cartographers of a single space and breathe in being there. I had no idea how I would ever, like, have an excuse to talk to her. Till I noticed she and her friends hang out and play Street Fighter at the 7-Eleven every day after school. <laughs>